Okay, so we're going to ask uh, we're going to ask one more question, and then we're going to get you guys out of here for lunch. Um, you're going to probably think this is weird, but when I got invited to come, I Googled you because I was like, I don't really know Jeff Durbin, and so I started seeing the videos. All that to say that it sets up this last question because I started watching some of your conversations with atheists, and so the last question was this: um, How do I have a conversation with an atheist, and so that and the, the question literally said so that they're not so close-minded. Now, first, I'll say, do the same thing that I did because it was really good to watch Jeff in action. So I'm going to give you some homework to go and do that, especially those that asked me that question because um, he, I think he does a great job of demonstrating some of that. Um, so before he responds, I just want to challenge you to go and do that. Um, what, what website can I point them um, to? If you, well, okay, so definitely go to apologiaradio.com okay. to get all of our radio shows and our regular weekly stuff. We also have a TV show that airs on the NRB Network weekly. So you can do that. You can sign up for our all access and get access to my academy, all of our shows, apologiaradio.com. You should definitely do that. But Apologia Studios on YouTube, it, there's just tons of videos and content. And actually, yeah, I think you probably heard some, some actual conversations yeah. with atheists right. and agnostics and things like that. So I would definitely Yeah, that's what I did. But, uh, but I do want you to go ahead and answer that. Yeah. But I, I do want to give you that homework. Go and watch it in action because I think that'll also give you just some context. It's really happening right in front of you. Yeah. Okay, so the question was, how do you do it in a way to sort of disarm them so they're not so hostile? Yeah. Okay, so this is important. Um, foundationally, and I know you're probably hungry. We started a little late with my message, so I'm sorry to run over on your time, but I just want to make sure I say this in a way that is meaningful. First and foremost, the problem with the unbeliever that you're talking to is a more fundamental problem than they want to talk about. It's not simply that they don't see enough evidence for God or light for God. It says in the Bible that we are in one of two people. We're either in Jesus or we're in Adam. That is, we are either fallen or we are saved. So we are either in a relationship of peace with God or we are in a hostile relationship with God. So the truth is, the Bible actually says that it is God by his grace that he grants people understanding he grants them eyes to see. He grants them the ability to see him. So watch this. I'm trying to give some hope here. Mm -hmm. It's not up to you yeah. and to me to ultimately convince anybody into God's kingdom. However, I think that one of the most important things we can do as we engage people is, is pay close attention to 1 Peter 3.15. I, I said it to you at the beginning, right? Right? Sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to give a reason defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that's within you. Watch. It says to do it with gentleness and respect. So I think one of the most important things we can do to disarm somebody is stop trying to be the one who wins. Win the person, not the argument which means that you should respect and love somebody, treat them with humility, but when necessary, breathe fire. You can breathe fire. Breathe fire when necessary, but it's not always time to breathe fire. But understand that when you are witnessing to somebody and they finally see and believe, that's to the glory of God and it's his work, not yours, which means that it's important for us to let go of the reins in trying to manipulate the conversation and the person and recognize that if they're ever going to get any light into their heart, it's because God's going to put it there. Our role is to testify to the truth, to just tell the truth. And I think if people see in you that you actually love them and care for them and not just trying to win, it does disarm them. And I think it's one of the most important things for me in my ministry, and I hope that it's reflected in the videos that are up, that I try to love the people that I'm talking to and to show them through my own actions how much I truly am concerned for them. And if they see that in you, I believe that they see your sincerity and that you're genuine and they respond. It's not always that way. Sometimes people are just hostile with God and uh, you just need to trust God and continue to love them anyways. Jesus did. And so um, stand on God's word. Testify to his truth. Understand it's the gospel that saves. That's the power of God for salvation. It's the message of the gospel that God uses to save people. Our role is to love them and to tell them the truth. And ultimately, when God saves, it's to his glory. So stop trying so hard. <laughs> Does that answer it? Don't try so hard. Just love people and trust God. <laughs>